This is a painterly effect I did a while ago using an older version of Photoshop Elements. A recent visitor to my website, Stephen, asked about this technique and I thought, yeah, perhaps you could give it a bit of a remake. So, this time we're going to be using Dufferin Gardens, which is just outside Cardiff in the UK, and uh, the first stage is we need to brighten up some of the shadow areas. So using Command J, Control J to duplicate the background layer, we're now going to go to the Enhance, dropping down to adjust lighting we're going to go to shadow and highlights this is the default setting for shadow and highlights you can see it's brought through some detail there in the shadow areas in particular coming down let's just take a look first of all at the dark and highlights clicking on the slider as we move it across we can see more detail coming through in the clouds just being aware that uh, of the detail coming through in this part so leaving it on what we got there, we got 28% mid-tone contrast, just taking that up a little bit, coming back to the light and shadows, just increasing that, click OK, and there it is, job done. Right, for the next stage, we're going to go to filter, we're going to drop down to blur, we're going to go to smart blur, this is where we're going to apply the first stage of a painterly effect. I'm going to click down and drag it around, I'm looking for an area to come up to there should be pretty good with a little bit of detail so we can see the way this is working if we click down there's the before there's the after let's just take the radius up as you take the radius up you'll notice the detail is coming back again but if we come down to the threshold we can start to move the threshold up and as we start to move the threshold you'll notice that paint of the effect beginning to come through there that's just the sort of look I'm after perhaps just playing with this a little bit more to take that up just to that sort of area there looks pretty good perhaps even dropping that down a wee bit that's better you can see the detail coming through there just the look I'm after now quality we got set on low you would think that medium would give a better finish or high but we begin to lose detail again so in this case quality of low works perfectly well clicking OK to that waiting for this to go through sitting back very patiently waiting for this to go through and trying to get a rather shy there it is there progress bar uh, once this is applied the next stage is to give it a sketch effect now for that command J control J so we've duplicated layer 1 we've now got layer 1 copy to this layer the sketch effect which we're going to do under the filter filter gallery now when filter gallery opens we're heading straight for and with the drop down menu glowing edges we're going to use glowing edges to give a sketch effect right let's just take a look I got the edge width set on three now if I right click let's head in for 50 percent so we can zoom in we can see exactly what's going on there and uh, edge width three looks pretty good like that you can take it up a little bit more if you want to but no that's way over the top looks more like fluorescent light tubes rather than the lighting effect so dropping it back to that area there edge brightness as well that looks pretty good on the default of seven so that looks good like that and the smoothness of nine yeah you can see as we drop it down we begin to sort of uh, bring through the that's going to give more lineage in that area I'm just going to take it up a little bit on this six looks pretty good yep let's just have a look around like the way that's working you can right click you can go back to fit in view fit in view will allow you to see the whole of the picture like the way that's looking so we're going to click OK to this through it goes now you'll notice we have got some color don't particularly want that so we're going to go to enhance adjust color coming down to remove color which will remove the color we've now got black with white lines we want it the other way around using command I control I we have now inverted that and that's the start of our sketch effect now to bring through the image underneath in other words layer one we're going to come to the blend mode we need to darken down the white areas so we can use any of the darkened ones here in the blend mode but multiply will give the best effect through that comes looking pretty good so far let's just zoom in and take a look yep like the way that's looking that's going to work well so we're going to put in a new empty layer on top of layer one copy now we're going to fill layer two with white so we're going to go to edit dropping down to fill layer now with fill layer the content 
You could, if you've got the default colours of black and white, head for the background colour, that will give you white, or just drop down, selecting white from the menu there, clicking OK, there it is, it's filled with white. I'm just going to use Command-0, Control-0 to go back to fit on screen. OK, for the next stage, we're going to put in a layer mask. We're going to be using masking for this. Now we've got black as the foreground colour, which is exactly what we want. We're going to pick up a paintbrush. Now if we just take a look at this and see the way it's working, if I use the right hand square bracket, that increases the size of my brush. You can see my brush is now 100 pixel. Now if I click down and drag this across, you can see the effect that's having. But what we're going to do is we're going to start to adjust the brushes. The first change we're going to do is we're going to right click, we're going to change it from the default brushes to, let's just have a look at the dry media brushes, that could be pretty good. This one here, 63 pixels, if you just press enter or return, that will remove that panel. 63 pixels, a bit small, don't forget, right hand square bracket takes the brush size up, something there, 250 would be pretty good. But we're going to change the brush even more, because at the moment the brush just looks like this. If we come up to where the little brush icon is there, we can click on this. Coming down, clicking on the scatter, we're going to move the scatter up. You'll notice the way the preview opens up a little bit. The spacing as well, if we take the spacing up, you can see the way the spacing is. Now when I click down and drag it across, you can see this sort of effect we're having. It's almost a bit like footprints coming through there. Right, using Control or Command Z once, Control or Command Z again, just to remove those. We're now going to start on the picture itself. So just coming through, clicking down, you see I've got quite a large brush. I think I'll just drop it down a little bit in size. And now just coming into the picture and just coming over it like this quickly, just to bring through some of the detail like this. And you can see the Dufferin House there beginning to come through. Different house is situated in the Vale of Glamorgan, just outside Cardiff. Um, lots of the autumnal shots I do when I refer to a local arboretum. Yes, it's in the trees over there. It's got a absolutely fantastic gardens to it. The house itself is being in the process, or it's being restored to its former glory. Absolutely fantastic place. And just coming down, bringing in the path area like this. And that looks pretty good. That's brought through just enough detail around this area, perhaps a little bit in the sky. And you can bring back as much as the picture or as little as the picture as you want. In other words, I'm not going to come right over the edges. Right, let's change the brush. We're going to right click. I'm going to come and from the brush menu here, what we're going to go for next. I think we shall try something a bit different. Let's have a look at um, wet media brushes. Yeah. Right, clicking on this one here, our little spotty brush, that looks pretty good. Again, pressing enter or return to remove that panel. You can see it's a 54 pixel, quite a small brush, so let's take it up in size to this area. And once again, coming up to our little brush icon itself and coming in, changing the scattering, changing the spacing. You'll notice the way it changes up there in the preview. That looks pretty good. Pressing enter or return to remove that. So now we can come into the picture. And if we zoom in as well, stay, thank you, we can now come in, we can start to come over this and bring through more of the detail, so we're using the two brushes together and you can see the way we can give that sort of splattered look to it so that comes through like this and blend in the two brushes, you can see the way the one comes against the other some nice colours in the tree here, but yes it was taken um, got what month <laughs> it was taken October so we were into the autumn and so we've got some nice colors on the tree coming through here and I've got a bin there so I'm going to go around my bin so I don't bring that back and down around that area but I like using this brush it does give quite a nice scattered effect particularly with the sort of brush we've used underneath that wet media brush path coming through here giving us a, a nice leading line through into the building itself you see it helps to take you on a bit of a journey through the picture and oh I've gone over the bin right okay press X on the keyboard that puts white as a foreground color and now I can sort of paint back over that so we can 
obliterate it so it's now a has been. Right, moving swiftly on, coming across to that area there. I know they don't get any worse, do they? Or better? Yeah. Right, coming over there's the statue that's uh, it's quite famous for. It's a chap on the back of an ox. Well, Chinese chap or Japanese. And uh, through we come like this. Sorry, I know you're going to take much longer and do a much better job than I do, because you always do, and because I'm rushing. Yeah, I know you don't like to get bored. So coming through over this area, you can, of course, increase the brush size. I'm going to increase the brush size like that, and I can come through it even quicker now. And love the way the two brushes work together. You know, two totally different brushes, but this one itself may look when you first click on it as a bit of a weird brush but it really does give quite a nice sort of dappled effect all right i've gone over a bit too sort of you know the brush being a bit too large there but uh, don't tell anybody hopefully nobody will notice right coming through on the trees like this just finally over the edge of that building and you can see the way the lineage is working there nicely with it don't forget we're working in layers but we're using the mask uh, we have got a fair bit of flexibility going on at this stage. We're going to be applying one more sort of effect to this in just a second. So just coming through, taking a look at it so far. If we come to where we've got the lines on our layer one, it's always a good idea. Let's call this uh, what it is. It's a sketch effect on that. And this is the paint of the effect. So you can call and you just click on it. And Paint, I'll just call that paint for now so we know exactly what it is. You can come to the sketch layer in the multiplied blend mode. We've got 100% opacity there. You can, if you want to, just drop it down. You can see just blending it in there. That looks pretty good. What we got? We've got 66%. Yep, like the way that's looking. You can see it before and after. Perhaps even dropping it down a little bit more. Like it. Right, zooming out using Command 0, Control 0 to go to fit on screen. There's the story so far, just coming back to the mask, perhaps just adding a little bit round this part here. Like that, and there it is. And there's our path taking us through on our trip. Right, next stage. We're going to put these layers into a new layer. So we're going to put a new empty layer above layer 2. This is now layer 3. We're going to hold down the Alt or the Option key. We're going to go to Layer. We're going to drop down to Merge Visible, which will put all these layers into this new layer here. That looks pretty good like that. Next, we're going to go to Filter. We're going to drop down to Texture. We're going to go to Texture Riser. Guess what? Yes, we're going to add texture to this particular layer. When it comes through, taking a look at it, if you right click again, you can go to 100%, a pop into 100%. Here it is using my favorite texture, which is sandstone, and you can see the way that's working. You can see the whole effect there. This is in at 100%, so this is how it's going to look. There's the chap sat on top of his oxen. That's what it is, it's an oxen, yeah. And what was it a water buffalo? I don't know, something with four legs and horns and right coming through that looks pretty good you can of course change it to canvas there it is with the canvas effects that looks nice with that as well but I must be honest I do like the uh, the sandstone worth trying different sort of the relief on this don't forget we are in at 100% but what you can do is if you do overcook it very slightly like this and that looks pretty good like that we're going to click OK you can always now zoom into it taking a look at the finished image going in at 100% so we're in at 100% here taking a look at that and now just gently dropping the opacity down to blend it in there that looks pretty good look at the area of the sky Bring back my hand oh, look at the area of the sky and the building to finish it off command 0 control 0 to go to fit on screen because uh, we need now to drop down to levels so I'm doing an adjustment layer of levels there it is open you can see if we just bring this in we darken it down come to this side we brighten it up a bit I'm going to come straight to the center though and I'm going to grab hold of this moving it to the left we increase the number of lighter pixels in the picture I'm going to take it up to something like that there that's the sort of effect I'm after. Right, next, coming back to the layers panel. 
dropping down. We're going to go this time to hue saturation. With hue saturation, come into the saturation slider. If we grab hold of this, we're on the master one, which is all the channels as such. We can now begin to move that up into that area there. Like the way those colors are coming through. In fact, I'm going to drop down. I'm going to go for red just to bring through these autumnal colors here. So coming in, coming on saturation, just bringing that up into this sort of area there, just bringing through the most of those colors and, or should I say, making the most of those colors. That looks pretty good like that. And just coming down one more time into that area. Right, like it. You can always drop down to yellow. No, yellow is in the greens here. And just come into the saturation and perhaps just dropping that down a little bit. You can see you can just take the sting out of the yellows. It's also coming into the colors, as you notice down here, of our autumnal leaves. So what we can do is click on this, move it into this area. So in other words, we're now pushing it out of the oranges and the yellows. We're now concentrating it more onto the greens. That looks better like that. Coming back to master, you can always take a look as well. That's the before, that's the after. You can see it looks great there with the colors coming through. There it is job done. There's our finished picture. Just zooming in, taking a look around, we're in at 50%, uh, let's just go back to 50%, and you can see you've got some nice texture, the way the sort of paint effect has worked there, the, all the bits and pieces with the building, it's all come through nicely, some nice sort of painterly effects, and the artist actually forgot to paint whatever was there, the bin. Right. Command zero, control zero to go back out to fit on screen. There it is. There's our finished image using the paint to the effect. Yes, we've used Photoshop elements, but you can do this in all versions of Photoshop. Go on, give it a try. Until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.